In this video, we go over 12 pricing tips for artists. Number one, it's better to start pricing your art and start selling it than to not price your art at all. And the reason why this is so powerful is because the most important piece of information that you can get about your prices and your artworks is market feedback. Are people willing to pay $500 for your art or $1,000 for your art? Or is it just sitting there on some online gallery without being sold for a couple of years because you priced it way too high? These are questions you cannot answer yourself, but what you can do is figure them out yourself by stepping into the market and listen to the feedback. Number two, your prices are not written in stone and can be changed at any time. A lot of artists think that once they price their artwork, they cannot lower it anymore because if they would lower it, they would expose themselves and show that they either didn't know how to price their work and have to lower it now, we're charging way too much and have to lower it now, or we're simply trying to rip people off and have to lower it now. And so as a result, nobody is dropping their prices out of fear, even though nobody is selling their work. And so the second tip is to understand that it's okay to lower your prices. Nobody is going to notice and nobody cares because everybody is busy with their own problems. Number three, it's better to sell and have a sales track record than to have art that doesn't sell but is priced at highest price points so that you can impress people with the illusion of expensive art. In other words, don't be afraid to not be a big shot artist from the start and price your art at price points that people are actually willing to buy. I'm looking at you, John, with your tiny little drawings that cost $4,000 even though you're only 21 years old and started drawing three years ago. Number four, people feel with their credit card and the more they pay for something, the more they value it. In other words, if you are selling your art for prices of $40, you have to understand that no matter how good your art is, nobody will think that it's amazing for the simple fact that it only costs $40. And so yes, John, $4,000 for your little drawings is too much. But come on, John. $40. Number five, understand that the price of your work needs to be in line with the context your work is hanging in. If your work is hanging in a local coffee shop, it will not be perceived as an expensive work of art. If you then price it at $50,000, people are going to laugh you out of the room. And $500 is probably a more appropriate, appropriate price. But if that same work would be hanging in a gallery in New York, it would suddenly feel much more expensive and higher prices will be expected by people. In other words, the same local coffee shop piece of art might very well be priced at $3,000 in that New York art gallery. Number six, charge a little bit more so that at any given moment in time you can create discounts for your art so that you can use discounts to sell more art without feeling bad about not getting enough money because of the discounted prices. Number seven, start charging resentment fees on your art. I see a lot of artists who make art and try to promote their art on social media and don't sell anything for years on end. And as a result, they start to lower their prices to the point that it just doesn't feel good anymore. And then when they finally sell some art, they feel terrible because they worked 50 hours on something and only got $65 for it, meaning they might as well work at McDonald's and get paid 10 times more an hour. And feeling this type of resentment after you sold a piece is the last thing that you want to feel. And so in this scenario, raise your prices until you don't feel bad anymore. Number eight, using a pricing ladder for your art on your website in order to sell more in the long term. A pricing ladder is a system where you have several products at various price points so that you have something for every budget and don't miss out on potential customers that want to buy something from you but don't have $2,000 to spend on it. And so a pricing ladder might look something like this. A $20 print on demand product like a poster, a $400 original limited edition signature art print, and then a $2,000 original piece of art. The reason why this is so powerful is because it's easier to sell to already existing customers than it is to sell to new customers who have never heard from you or bought from you in their entire life. And so the power of that $20 poster is that you can increase your customer base and then at a later date sell a higher priced product like an original piece of art to those same customers who are by now familiar with your stuff. Number nine, there is no need to feel insecure about your prices if you are standing on an art fair and someone asks you how much your work costs. Simply state the price and shut up. Don't start to defend your prices, just state them and shut up. Number 10, don't use pricing formulas because art 
cannot be put in a formula. How are you going to put the state of an artwork in a formula? Why are auction prices dropping dramatically when it's raining during the day of the auction? And how are you going to put that in a formula? How are you going to put the amount of press an artist has in a formula? How are you going to put the social media followers in a formula? How are you going to put the desire in a formula, what if two art collectors have some sort of conflict with each other and suddenly during the auction see that both of them are interested in the same piece and losing against their collector enemy would feel like an insult and so now they start fighting for emotional reasons which pushes the prices up way beyond the estimate. How are you going to put that in a formula? Well, let me tell you how. You can't. It's not possible to put beauty and feelings in a formula. And so don't use formulas, but use common sense instead. Number 11, understand what is going to push the price of your art up so that you can justify your prices. And so what is going to push the price of your artworks upwards? The exhibitions you have, the collections that house your work, the famous people who have collected your art, the awards or grants you've won, the publications that have been written about your work, papers, catalogs, magazines, blogs, books, etc., 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 and who who wrote those publications? Is this an established art critic or just an 18 year old blogger that put his first pen to paper two months ago? Number 12. In order to price your art properly, you have to understand that a five minute YouTube video can only give you as much as five minutes can give you. And so in order to truly understand how to price your art, we should dive deep in the theory of art pricing. We should have a whole playlist where we talk about pricing your art in order to attract galleries, which pricing systems sell more and which pricing systems sell less and why some art forms are more expensive than other art forms. But that playlist that has all the answers to make your dreams come true simply doesn't exist for free on YouTube. Except for the fact that it does because I've created it and you could be watching that playlist. I'll link the playlist in the description and the end screen. That said, get the hell out of here.